In this video, I will provide you with something to think about if you're planning on extending a roof to build a home addition where you would have a situation like this where the roof trusses would actually need to be made to have the same height as the existing trusses. Now, the first thing I want to point out for those of you who think you can simply measure these roof trusses is that they might already be sagging or starting to reshape themselves. For example, if the truss is sagging and you simply measure the distance from the top to the bottom and the width along with with the height right here and all the critical measurements that the roof truss manufacturing company is going to need to build a roof truss that might not be sagging, then the new roof trusses might not line up with the existing ones. And in some cases, that's not going to be a problem because you can usually add furring strips to either side. So for example, if the roof truss lines up perfectly, you don't have to do anything. If it's a little low, then you're probably going to be able to simply add some shaped lumber to the top of the roof truss, something like this, to make the new roof blend in with the existing one. And of course, if it is sticking up, then you can usually install the shaped furring strips on the other side, except you're probably not going to be able to install them on top of the roof sheathing. Now, I'm not about to suggest that you won't be able to use this method, but as you can see here, if I was to add plywood to the new trusses, and that plywood is going to sit on top of the furring strips, then it won't take a rocket scientist to figure out that you're gonna have a problem once you get to this point here, because if we were going to install roof sheathing over this area here, it's not going to blend in with our new roof trusses. So I think in order to do something like this, you're going to need to remove the existing roof sheathing and then add the furring strips and then install new sheathing over this area here unless somehow you can make this transition work and you might be able to do that a little easier if you're going to have a tile roof than you would if you're going to use composition shingles and when we do something like this we could end up with a small variation in the fascia board especially if you get over to an area like this where the angle of the new fascia board if it's going to be cut square not plumb if it's a plumb cut like we're looking at here you might not have a problem however if it's a different angled cut then you could end up with a slight variation here so just be aware of that i'm not going to go into all the details about all the other problems you could run into trying to make something like this work however i can provide you with one suggestion and that would be to use conventionally framed roof rafters with ceiling joist. If you're dealing with roof trusses that are already sagging or deformed, or you're going to have a difficult time getting the exact measurements you need for the roof truss manufacturing company. As someone who has done a lot of room additions, I can tell you this, it's only a matter of time before you run into this problem here, especially if you check the roof and you see that it's a 5 and 12 and you order 5 5 and 12 roof trusses only to find out that the roof truss company didn't make your trusses exactly 5 and 12 or that the existing roof isn't built with roof trusses with an exact 5 and 12 roof pitch either. And of course another option would be to remove all of the existing roof trusses along with the fill area and simply rebuild this section of the house. 